All right, so what I want to show you guys here is how I reseal these upper cam covers, uh, cam cradles, whatever you want to call them. Um, what I do is I use two uh, really thick, heavy-duty zip ties over here. And then I also use, just in case, a zip tie there that goes, if you can see, that goes all the way down to, there's like a metal bracket down there that you can actually tie up to. Um, and that holds it pretty well, I think, enough so that they, it moves just a tiny hair there, as you can see. This one moved a little bit right there, as you can see. See how small that is? But it's nowhere near to how they move um, when you don't do this. They move up a lot higher. So this actually seems to work and uh, I've never done this be this way before. This is gonna be my first time doing it with this. And uh, it's, it, I mean, it should be fine because we're only about maybe half a millimeter there and half a millimeter there of clearance. They usually lift like up like that a little bit, like that, right? So there's this cam bridge holding this chain in place. So I, st I still mark it just in case, just for some peace of mind at the marking points but this should stay this should stay how it is it shouldn't jump time um unless you take like a wrench on here and physically like move it i don't understand how it would jump time the only problem with this is um if you don't use the zip tie method right uh what you're gonna run into is you're going to have these lift up a little bit and then it, what'll happen is your tensioner might extract like a tooth or two so when you're putting when you're setting this down with the new cover you're putting a little bit more strain on the chain right on the tensioner and the guides so which is what you're not supposed to do which is why they want you to take the lower timing cover off and uh, release tension off the chain with the tensioner and all that so but if this method seems to work right because there's no way you can jump time this way then if you're just resealing the upper cover without doing the lower cover I see no reason why you can't do it this way so you see how there's a small little gap there okay that's manageable so all you got to do is go by hand don't take any drills or anything and just go by hand and tighten each one of these in that in the tightening pattern okay the tightening pattern starts from the inside and work your way out. So you just take this and you go one by one very carefully by hand and you tighten them like this slowly, slowly, slowly to get the valve cover to get pushed down evenly. You don't want to start tightening one row of them all the way down. You have to go progressively half a turn on each one back and forth until the valve cover is perfectly flat and only then can you go and tighten it to eight newton meters plus your, uh, I think it's a 90 degree turn. So very, very crucial step here. Make sure you take your time, don't rush. Don't rush this, uh, this step here on reinstallation. The other thing you guys, uh, you, you should pay attention to uh, before putting the cover back on, make sure your rocker, rocker cams, rocker arms are not like to the side because they do move and what can happen is they can like move out of place a little bit. So make sure that they're all lined up. They should be perfectly flat. They should be all perfectly even. Not off to the side or anything like that. So before putting this cover back on, what I like to do is use this uh, Liquamali installation paste on all of these lobes here, 
the inner ones and the outers. And I also put a very thin, thin layer on the camshaft. What I mean thin, I mean like paper thin. You don't want a lot of the stuff going through your engine. Okay, on everything that's in contact with rotational uh, metal, metal parts, you're gonna wanna put this uh, lubricant on there before you install the paste. And then at this point, we can start getting all of our new bolts ready. The bolts have to be brand new. You have to get this little seal ready for right here. There's a rubber seal and you can apply all of your sealant. Here's that camware, by the way, you can see. Which I believe it's from this right here. See that piece missing? Just be nice and smooth. Anyway, this is completely clean now. Everything is cleaned. I use a assortment of a sandpapers and razor blades. So do you see all that gasket material that's all over? All that would be down in there if I wasn't for these for these papers. So now with a vacuum I can carefully take out the paper towels, also one there for the oil separator, and then vacuum it lightly and then you can install the new one. So what I want to show you guys what I started doing also, instead of vacuuming out all the little pieces from this old gasket material, I take a, a roll of, uh, of uh, paper and I, I go one, two, three, four, five, there's like 15, roll, 15 pieces in there. And what that allows me to do is prevent gasket material from going inside the engine, right? You want to limit that. So when I take these out very carefully at the, when I'm done, I just do a little bit of light vacuuming in there to get everything out and then carefully reinstall it back. But then this way it keeps it um, as clean as possible. You know what I'm saying? 